What happens when the pursuit of youth, fame, and perfection goes horribly wrong? Some very intense shit. I guess the creators of this film saw Death Becomes Her and decided to make a darker, twisted version of it. And I'm not mad at it. The substance dives deep into the relentless pressure society places on women to stay youthful, desirable, and relevant, no matter the cost. Through the lens of Elizabeth's journey, we see the highs of fame and adoration and the devastating lows of being cast aside when the world deems her no longer useful or profitable. It's a hunting reflection of the beauty standards we uphold, the double standards women face, and the lengths one might go to to reclaim power in a world that's quick to snatch it away. With that being said, it's time to talk about this movie. So let's get into it. The movie kicks off with Elizabeth Sparkle's star being made for the Walk of Fame. At first, it's shiny and flawless, but over time, it starts to show some wear and tear. This represents her big moment in the spotlight, reaching the height of fame, and then slowly fading into irrelevance. We meet Elizabeth Sparkle on her 50th birthday of all days. Listen, I'm not even going to hold you, and you already know what I'm thinking, but when it comes to Miss Demi Moore... It is and has always been, yep, in the contract. However, in this role, it gets a bit, well, you'll see for yourselves. But anyway, after she films her workout video, she goes to the only working bathroom, the men's bathroom, where she overhears her producer, Harvey, criticizing her fleeting fame and age to someone on the phone. He planned to replace her with someone younger and more beautiful. We need her young. We need her now. I don't give a fuck what we promised her. Find me somebody new. And of course, this upsets Elizabeth. Later that day, she has a meeting with Harvey and child. Let's talk about Harvey and this meal of shrimp and pure butter. Cholesterol gotta be off the charts. If they did his blood work, I'm pretty sure that lippy profile was something serious. But he tells her she's being replaced, though he left out the real reason why. And when she pressed him for the answer, he wouldn't say. So after this dinner, she's driving home and sees her picture being taken down. And while she's distracted, she gets into a wreck. Mind you, all of this happens on her birthday. It's a shitty day. She goes to the hospital. She's fine after the accident, though she's probably shaken and bruised up. But this doctor pretty much dismisses her, offers zero empathy after she starts crying and leaves the room. His assistant examines her more and mentions she'd be a good candidate, but he doesn't say for what. He slips a paper in her coat pocket that she finds after leaving the hospital. The note contained a flash drive with the words, the substance on it, and a number on the the back of it. As she's looking at this, she runs into a high school friend, Fred, who she doesn't recognize, but he recognizes her. She offers to take his number so they could meet up for coffee and catch up. This guy writes his number on the copy of his blood work and tells her not to look at his cholesterol levels. I'm noticing a theme here. Again, it's her birthday, but Elizabeth seems lonely. There's no friends, no birthday dinner, just her alone in her penthouse. She decides to watch whatever's on the flash drive, and it turned out to be a presentation on the substance and what it was about. It promised a better version of you. You live one week as a new and improved version of you, and then as the current and real you for the next week. The presentation stressed that the two versions were still you and that you couldn't escape yourself. Remember this. This is very important. Elizabeth thinks this is some BS, so she throws the flash drive in the trash and goes out to have a birthday drink. She returns home, drunk and alone. She looks over all the awards she's won over the years and gets the urge to fetch their flash drive out the trash and call the number on the back. She's given an address for pickup. The next day, she receives a random P.O. box number in the mail and she goes to the address given to her the night before. This place was sketchy as hell, but her brave self picks up her package and goes back home. These directions were real simple, real clear, and very concise, but not descriptive enough for everything she's about to do. You will see what I mean in just a second. So she stands in front of her bathroom mirror. This is the last time she's going to look this normal 
it all goes downhill from here. But Elizabeth does the first step by inserting the activator into her arm. Listen, what random person knows how to find their own vein and insert a needle? I mean, certain people may know, and this is Hollywood, but the average person doing this, child, this is kind of intense for an at-home kid. Nothing happens at first, but moments later, Elizabeth gets dizzy and falls to the floor. Weird things start happening. There's movement in her body, another set of eyes form. Then her back opens up and slowly the new and improved version of herself emerges. She examines this new, younger version of herself and she's in love with her body, specifically her ass. She eventually stops admiring herself long enough to sew her older self back up. Mind you, she does this thoughtfully and carefully again, this is a lot for an at-home kid. She also sets up the feeding matrix for her older body. Everything is fine for a while. She goes to bed, wakes up a little while later. She's reminded rather harshly she needs to stabilize. This involves sticking this needle into her older body's spine and sticking another needle into her younger self. She has to do this every day. Again, this is harsh for an at-home situation. Who would know how to do this? And why didn't she cover the body? Give her a blanket or something. The younger version of Elizabeth starts enjoying the fruits of older Elizabeth's labor rather quickly. She has this beautiful penthouse to enjoy. She's able to buy a new outfit. She gets her old job and a new identity. Please say your name, age, measurements. I'm Sue. Harvey meets Sue, and of course, he loves her. He has a new beauty to gain from as he smokes his cigarettes, eats endless butter, and neglects his own health and teeth. Sue informs Harvey that she has a sick mother to care for every other week to cover for when she has to switch to her older body, and Harvey agrees to work with her schedule. Things are looking up for Sue for her first full week. She's landed a new gig and started to prepare for the launch of her show. She continues to take care of her older body, making sure she was comfortable. But then it was finally time to switch back and it wasn't as smooth of a transition for her older body. It was rough. Elizabeth gets herself together and goes to her old job where she runs into Harvey. Tell me why Harvey played in her face, acting like he didn't actively fire and replace her. He even gives her a parting gift. We'll find out what the gift is later. Elizabeth doesn't do much during her week. She stays at home and watches TV until it was time to pick up a refill kit for the following week. We fast forward to Sue's week. Sue gets the bright idea to hide Elizabeth's body during her weeks by building a separate room in the bathroom. All by herself, in one day we continue to see how differently the world specifically men treats sue the next door neighbor was ready to complain about all the noise that sue was making but as soon as he saw her and realized it wasn't elizabeth making the noise he simmered down and even offered to help he definitely wouldn't have offered to help elizabeth sue places elizabeth in the other room along with a damaged photo of herself at this point sue still shows concern for elizabeth but doesn't want her to be seen and doesn't care to see her herself sue's show finally launches and baby i don't know what kind of workout show this was but all i saw was ass lips lips and hips child this was different to celebrate the launch of her new show sue plans a night out with her co-workers her last night is sue before she was set to switch now elizabeth was running low on food matrix but sue decided to risk it by going out anyway by the time she comes home elizabeth is completely out of food and due for a switch but sue decides to delay it for a few more hours by stabilizing instead of switching sue brought home a little cutie so in her mind the reward was worth the risk so she well yeah reminder you're supposed to switch every seven days no exceptions and sue's risky behavior came at a cost elizabeth's finger elizabeth calls the number and when she tells them about sue misusing the stabilizer and not switching the representative reminds her that there isn't a sue and elizabeth 
they are one and she must respect the balance. He also tells her that what's used on one side is lost on the other. Any damage that occurs is irreversible. So Elizabeth goes on to clean up Sue's mess and as she's cleaning, she sees Sue's new show and this is where things start to change for both Sue and Elizabeth. They slowly start to resent each other. Elizabeth goes through her week per usual. She doesn't do anything and only leaves the house to get her refill kit. She goes to this restaurant to get a bite to eat and calm her nerves. She starts getting paranoid around this time too. It's here where she runs into the guy she met at the emergency room, the one who gave her the info about the substance. Apparently, it was his off week. He mentions to Elizabeth how each time he switches to the older him, he feels a little more lonely and how it gets harder to know that he still matters. Has she started yet eating away at you? Again, we are reminded how different the world treats Sue compared to Elizabeth. Elizabeth runs into Diego, who is really aggressive and rude to her, the complete opposite of how he was with Sue. To feel better and get a boost to her fleeting self-esteem, Elizabeth reaches out to Fred to go out for drinks and he agrees to meet her later that night. But Elizabeth couldn't even make it out the house. She started comparing herself to Sue, repeatedly going back to apply more makeup and readjusting her outfit to the point where she breaks down, stays home, and stuffs her face until her week was over. It was Sue's week again, and Elizabeth's new diet, or lack thereof, starts causing problems for her. She calls a representative who tells her what he told Elizabeth. The two of them are one, and they must respect the balance. When Sue arrives at work, she's told that due to her high ratings, she's been chosen to host the network's New Year's Eve live celebration. So what does she do? Not respect the damn balance, and she refused to switch for weeks and when she finally did elizabeth was damn near unrecognizable elizabeth called the representative to complain yet again so he asked her if she wanted to stop the experience he also reminded her that any damage that had been done was irreversible elizabeth decides to stick it out for now because even though she was sick and tired of sue she was still addicted to the experience and all the other good things that came along with being her getting to be young beautiful and adored Elizabeth continues to rot on the couch per usual. She finally gets around to opening that farewell gift from Harvey. It was a cookbook that she put to use rather quickly. She cooked multiple recipes and enjoyed them. Her attempt at getting back at Sue for being careless and getting everything she wanted and their resentment towards each other reaches a new high at this point. Sue refuses to switch back for three months and on the night before her New Year's Eve show, she runs out of stable and makes a call to the representative to request more but she's told that she must switch to generate more stabilizer so she switches because she didn't have a choice at this point and baby it got even worse for elizabeth Elizabeth called the representative and requested to stop the experience she walks very briskly to the pickup spot this is literally the fastest we've seen her move when she gets back home she injects sue with a termination serum but changes her mind midway and resuscitates sue which turns out to be a huge mistake this separates the two they are no longer one at this point as soon as sue woke up and realized what she'd done she attacked elizabeth this was the most intense depiction of self-hate that I've ever seen and I couldn't bring myself to look at the screen. It was so brutal and I felt so sad for Elizabeth. Elizabeth seemed like a caring and sweet person prior to all of this so to see her evolve to this level of desperation, sadness, and have the hate for herself and her appearance and having that self-hate magnified by Sue, it was hard to watch. Sue kills Elizabeth. She continues on as if none of this happened, but she's soon reminded that not respecting the balance is going to cost her everything. Everything that's left at this point. Homegirl starts deteriorating. I'm talking teeth falling out, nails falling off, losing body parts, and here is where things just go completely off the rails. Elizabeth races home to take the activator that came with the initial kit for the substance that was single use, by the way, to restart the substance experience. And while she wanted to create a better version of herself, she creates this grotesque, mutated version of herself. And baby, there was no turning back. 
at this point. This mutated version contained both Sue and Elizabeth. They were now one again. And they, child, they took their ass to the New Year's Eve celebration looking like this. And the people let them go on like this was normal. Like this was an everyday thing. And why was this child here? There are topless dancers here. Eliza Sue, that's what we're calling her at this point, throws up a boob, a breast. And it was only then that this pair decided to cover their child's eyes. Poor baby been looking at boobs this entire time. Needless to say, it turns to a complete bloody mess the more Eliza Sue <laughs> mutates and recalls all the BS Harvey and other men have said to her to make her doubt herself or feel insecure about herself. It just doesn't stop. And child, Eliza Sue eventually makes it out of the building and ends up dying on top of her star on the Walk of Fame. And that was the end of the movie, child. Even though this movie was a bit unhinged towards the end, I really enjoyed it. Like I said before, it was like a darker version of Death Becomes Her. You have a woman who once had the beauty, the career, her youth, and all the benefits that came with that. And then you see her desperately trying to relive that time at any cost. Just the dramatic difference in the way Elizabeth was treated compared to Sue, how Harvey discarded her without a care because he could no longer gain from her beauty, how men can disregard their health, their appearance, their bodies, and still demand and expect so much from women physically. And this world, not just men, often choose how to treat you based on how you look. This movie was an intense reminder and a representation of that. I loved it, even though it was a bit much at times. But this movie is available to rent and purchase on Prime and Mubi. But yeah, thanks for watching this review. Please like, comment, and subscribe if you haven't already. And as for this Sunday's recap, all I'm going to say is... 2013, a Christmas themed sequel full of our Black Hollywood faves. And child, it's even messier than the first. And certain characters refuse to learn from their mistakes. See you next time, you guys. Bye.